What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name is Robbie and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Fleet which is a new code editor by uh, JetBrains. So it's looking pretty awesome and it's supposed to be comparable to VS Code. So here it is right here and it's still in public preview. But yeah, it's supposed to be similar to VS Code and if you've been doing web development in the past like five years you know VS Code has just taken over as far as code editors go. So uh, yeah, Sublime Text used to be really popular for web development. I think it's kind of dying off because of VS Code. Uh, we had Atom, which was uh, pretty popular. It was made by GitHub. But uh, you know, VS Code got more popular, and then Microsoft ended up buying GitHub. So they're ending Atom pretty soon. Uh, Nova came out a couple years ago. This is made by Panic, which makes uh, one password. And they used to make Coda, which was another code editor. And I tried this one, it's okay, but uh, it didn't support Go and it didn't like auto import stuff for me. So I didn't really like this one, but I don't know, they're still making it, so maybe that'll blow up. But yeah, if there's one company that I think can compete with Microsoft and VS Code, I think it's these guys, JetBrains. So they're kind of known for making their full-fledged IDEs. So they got like one for Go, WebStorm, one for Ruby, and I think they make the official Android uh, development IDE. But yeah, they came out with Fleet, and well, it's not even out yet, it's still in preview, but they're coming out with Fleet. And uh, yeah, I haven't tried it yet, I haven't downloaded it, so I'm going to download it right now, give you my first impressions, and hey, maybe this is the new code editor we're all going to be using. So yeah, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're there. Uh, I just passed 1,000 subscribers, which is exciting, that was my original goal for the channel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with it for a little bit longer and keep bringing these videos. So uh, yeah, subscribe and let's get right into it. All right, so let's get rolling. I'm going to go ahead and download it right now. And I'm on Windows, so I'll do that. And just download it. And it looks like it's 60 megabytes, so it's pretty lean. Let's see, install. It looks like it's doing it all. I don't even know why this is in the video. I'll probably cut this part out. But if you're seeing this right now, that's how you install it and it looks like we're good to go so let's open it uh, I'm gonna allow access what, what is this thing welcome to the toolbox app uh, I don't want the toolbox app All right, I already don't like this this is reminding me of uh, creative cloud a little bit so it looks like I'm downloading the editor right now Alright, so I'm installed and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and open it right now. And uh, this is actually my second take. In the first take, I tried to open some files that were hosted or stored in my uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. They wouldn't open. So I'm not sure if there's a way to make those work. So I went ahead, I installed Node on Windows, and I created some folders right here. So this first one right here is... Um, let me just get rid of this old one, is a uh, React TypeScript, TypeScript project. So we're going to start with this. So here we go right here. Uh, we got some components right here. Let's open app.tsx. And it uh, looks like it's all highlighted and everything. And we got TypeScript React selected. And uh, yeah, it's, what is this? It's just, uh, you might have to turn this on, but it's turning on smart mode. And this is what analyzes your code and gives it a much better experience. So I guess you have to do this for every folder, but let's just give it a minute to um, enable that. But while that's happening, let's take a look at the settings. So here's the settings right here. There's a few different themes. Uh, the one I like is Fleet Purple. Uh, key mappings, there's two options. I've never used IntelliJ, so I don't know either of them. Uh, let's see, you can change the font. Uh, there's just some show stuff right here you can take a look at. And uh, let's see, tooltip display, tab size, I changed mine to two. And then I just left everything default pretty much except for that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the interface. So by default, that was closed, but you can open a sidebar with all your files uh, down here. You can pretty much put whatever you want in these panels. So say I want a terminal down here, I could do that. Uh, I'm going to close it for now, and then you can do the same on the right side. So what is search? That's pretty cool if I need to find something in my project. 
Um, what does this button do? This is how you can find files. So say I want to index.html. Uh, I'm looking for tools, so let's go to files. There we go, it finds it, and it shows a little preview. That's pretty nice. If I search for some text, like app, uh, I accidentally clicked it, but it'll find uh, matches in your project. So pretty nice so far. The only thing is this takes forever to get going, so we're still waiting on that. Uh, let's see, what other panels are there? Docker, I don't have Docker installed, so you'll have to try that on your own. Uh, how do I close the, okay, close all tabs. Oh, that's cool, you can do tabs. Uh, how do I do the GitHub stuff? Git unavailable. Okay, let's init a Git repository in here. And now we can see that we're on master. I can create a new branch all in here. So let's go feature, failed. Master is not a blah, blah, blah. Feature cannot be created from it. Uh, what? Test. Create branch. So, uh, I don't know. But that's not working out of the box for me. Uh, let's see, what does this button do? So it looks like it has some cool collaboration tools. So I don't have anyone to try it with right now, but uh, you guys can check that out. What is this button? Run in the bug, search for stuff, notifications. Oh, you can get the settings from here. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, is this done yet? Okay, we got smart mode enabled. I'm gonna close the right side and let's try this out. Let's make a new component. Uh, I'll just call mine hey.tsx. And then let's import React. Let's see if it auto suggests the import. Uh, start typing React. What the heck? Uh, I didn't really auto suggest it how I wanted. So let's keep going. Let's create this component. And let's uh, export default. So it is suggesting some uh, code and stuff for me, which is nice. And then let's just have this return a p tag that um, says hey, and then name, which is gonna come from a prop. So let's make an interface for the props. Let's go interface iprops. And uh, we're gonna take in a name, which is gonna be a string. And let's uh, pass that right here. So let's destructure name off of iprops. And that's kind of cool. It shows where it's used and everything. Nice. And uh, what is this? Unused default export. So let's use it somewhere and see if that goes away. So let's go in here. Let's go, hey, let's see if it auto suggests it. Unresolved component. How do I resolve it? Okay, there it goes, it's suggesting it. And it auto imported it, awesome. And I believe there's a way to uh, format. So let's try that out. I gotta go to the settings to see what the button is. Format, Control Alt L. Okay, let's try that out. Let's go back here, Control Alt L. And it fixed it all up, very nice. Um. That seems like it's working pretty good. Let's try CSS. Why is it not highlighted? It seems just not highlighted at all. I don't like that. Let's delete everything and start over. Let's go margin. Okay, it's suggesting stuff. Padding to zero. I hit tab, it automatically adds that pixel. That's cool. Box sizing, border box. So it's suggesting the property is really good. I just don't like that it's not highlighted. Uh, let's see if SAS is any better. Let's rename this to .scss. Yeah, same kind of highlighting that's not great for CSS. Um, SVG. 
Doesn't show a preview or anything. That's not cool. But hey, it seems like it's working pretty good. It's suggesting imports. It's highlighting it nice. And uh, it's got the auto format, which is cool. Let's see if that works with CSS. Yep. And what's this warning right here? Unit of measure pixel is redundant. <laughs> I still use pixels. Oh, I guess because it's zero, it's redundant. That makes sense. And what if there is errors? It shows it right there. I don't know if that's supposed to do something, but shows the error right here, mismatched. Let's fix it. It goes away. And then we have a warning right here. Let's fix that. And we get the check. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see, package.json looks pretty standard. The ignore looks good. Read me. Markdown looks nice. Um, so what else? Let's try some ghost stuff. So let me close this. Let me add in test.go. Whoa, it just locked up. And my dog's barking. What the hell? Alright, the whole entire editor just locked up. That's uh, not good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to close it and start over. So I can't even close it. I'm going to have to control alt delete this. Oops, I gotta edit that word out. Um, where is it? All right, so it completely crashed on me. Not a good sign. There we go. It's closed. Let's open it again. Uh, let me go back here. Let's open it back up. Yeah, here we go. We're back. And one other thing I realized is that you know it's not suggesting that this is missing the name prop even though it's required. So that's kind of another minus of uh, this editor so far. And uh, I can't like hover over the component and see information on it. So it's a little more basic than VS Code, but um, that's okay. So let's close everything and let's, uh, let's try some ghost stuff now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this folder. I'll hit yes, and I'm going to drag this folder in, and it looks like it didn't crash this time, so that's good. Uh, let's turn smart mode on, or it's already on. And let's go package main, funk main, and let's just go fmt.print. I don't like that it's not suggesting anything, so let's import. FMT. Let's see if it'll suggest it now. FMT dot print line. Come on. So not suggesting anything. Uh, that's not the best. Hello. And I also don't like it. it. Seems like the highlighting sucks. Like none of this is highlighted. Like I want to see like this yellow and this blue or something. Uh, let's try a struct. Seems like it works okay. Honestly, the auto completion isn't the best. So I can start trying to use stuff. And it just doesn't suggest the import or any methods or anything on it. So I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this editor has a long way to go, to be honest. So uh, the TypeScript experience was okay. It didn't suggest all the stuff I wanted to. It was a little slow. The smart mode took forever to enable. Um, it had some cool stuff where it showed like where variables were used and all that. Uh, but yeah, the highlighting sucked everywhere. I didn't like how it was highlighted on uh, TypeScript files. I didn't like the highlighting in the CSS. 
uh, really the highlighting was not good anywhere. And then the whole thing crashed on me when I tried to open a new folder, so that wasn't great. The Git stuff didn't work for me. I couldn't create a new branch for whatever reason. I don't know if that was... No, I mean, everything was done through the app, so it's their fault. And, uh, yeah, to be honest, I think it has a while to go, and I think a big thing is going to be the plugin system, if they add one to this or not, because that's kind of what makes VS Code so great, as well as just its extreme uh, TypeScript, like, suggesting and all that. So, personally, I didn't really like this editor. I think it's really too early to judge it though. We have to see what happens in the next year or so. And um, yeah, that's Fleet right now. I'm going to give it a thumbs down for me, but I encourage you to try it yourself. And uh, hey, maybe I did stuff wrong, so maybe uh, I'm the idiot and it's not the app. But yeah, I hope you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're there. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.